Normally, of course, I try to uh, <laughs> be constructive about why I don't like episodes or why I think they're bad. But this Every now and then I run into one that's just so blatantly awful that I can't take it seriously. And here's the thing, an episode of Doctor Who can be objectively bad and still be a fun watch. Horns of Nymon is like that. Horns of Nymon is objectively bad. The budget's obviously not there. It's almost a pantomime. But it's silly fun. I enjoy when I watch Horns of Nymon because it's campy, it's silly, and it's fun. Can't, oh, Kenda is none of these things. Hey guys, Pro1701 here. And today, for today's review, normally, when I'm looking at a Doctor Who episode, and it's not the best episode on the planet, I try to give a constructive reasoning why I'm not as thrilled with that episode. This is not going to be one of those videos. Sometimes you just have one of those episodes that's so totally awful, you just have to be bluntly honest about it. This is going to be one of those reviews, so if you're not a fan of cussing, and I'm going to try really, really hard not to cuss, but it's going to be really hard. Or if you're just a fan of Kenda for some reason, or if you just don't like hearing people talk negative about anything Doctor Who. Which is silly because, I mean, it's been around 60 years. There's going to be a bad episode there somewhere. I never get these people who are like, I love every episode of Doctor Who ever. I can't think of any television show, show where I like every single episode ever. Unless it ran like 13 episodes. <laughs> Star Trek ran three seasons, the original series. And I don't like every episode of that. Have you seen Spark Spring? I never get these people. So Doctor Who has its fair share of bad episodes. More so in the modern show, but the classic show has a few. This is one of those. So, buckle up. And if uh, if you don't get into any of that kind of thing, I want to skip today's video. Okay, still with us. Point number one. Why is the doctor suddenly a moron? The doctor in episode two, because we are looking at episode two of Kenda, is an idiot. He is stupid. Like, when him and Adric are playing the little game when he's picking hands, he can't figure it out. Even when he's picked both hands, he's still trying to pick the hands, even though he's already seen there's nothing in either hand. I'm like, what? And then, of course, when Adric reaches out and pulls the coins behind his ear, the doctor is shocked. This is a thing you do, this is an old magician's trick you do for children. My best friend's children could have figured this out at five years old. The doctor, on the other hand, completely bewildered. I like, it's like he picks this hand, nothing's there. He picks this hand, nothing's there. Okay, you should be able to make conclusions at this point. He doesn't, he keeps picking hands. And I'm sitting here going, this is the doctor, right? Maybe it's just something about blonde doctors. Huh. And then later when the doctor's trying to do the trick, you see him with his ear, he's sitting in the cage like this, except while it's this side. And he's like, he can't figure out it's a trick. And he seems confused. And then when he talks to the, the female doctor and he does the coin thing and she picks the hand, he's like, oh, are you, are you sure? Sure you don't want to pick the other one? No, I want that one. And it's the one with the coin. And he looks dejected, she got it right. He's like, and I'm sitting here going, are you kidding me? This is the doctor? Look, I don't know where the doctor's self-esteem is here, but the doctor is not in control of this situation at all at any point. If the third doctor had been in there, he would have been karate chopping people at some point. You would have heard some, hey, at some point in there, he would have been beating people up and kicking people. He would have subdued the, the guy who's nuts and is in command at this point. Situation would have been over. The fourth doctor would have just played dumb and gone along with it, like Adric does. We'll get to that. That would have been the fourth. Oh, yes, I see what you mean. The trees, of course, the trees. But no, not blonde number.
number five. He is not in control of the situation. He is so not in control of the situation, he should be wearing a rainbow shirt. That's how not in control of the situation he is. I keep expecting the 13th doctor to show up and be like, look, five, you've really got to get a, in control of this situation here. You are not in control of this situation. You're about 10 steps behind what's going on. And when the 13th doctor is your motivational speaker, there's a problem. There is a problem. There's a huge red flag there. Oh, man. So, yeah, and Davison, I don't know what's up with Davison in this, but he is, Davison does some really good performances. Not in this story, he does not. Especially in this episode. I did like that part in part one when he's like, an apple a day keeps the, well, never mind. That was fine. Episode two, it's like he had something else on his mind the whole time. I, I never convinced he's the doctor in this. His performance is just boring. Which is a good way to sum up Kenda in general. Kenda's very boring. But his performance is just boring. The guy who's nuts, sometimes I think he's putting in a pretty good performance of being nuts. Sometimes I don't think he understands the lines he's spouting because when he's saying things, it's like the actor doesn't know what he's saying. He just knows he's supposed to say them. Other times he's really, really good. But he gets very irksome. And then when it cuts to that one scene of him and he's dressed up like Dr. Livingston, and the two villagers are dressed, are dressed up like Dr. Livingston. I laughed. I started laughing at their outfits with the little hats. I just... <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Livingston, I just... <laughs> oh, big red flag. <laughs> when I, the outfit makes me laugh. Colin Baker's outfit doesn't even make me laugh. But that made me laugh. Especially since it cut from... One part I thought was really dumb, right to that. <laughs> then there's the bit when the guy who's off his rocker keeps going through these weird emotional gambits. Like the, the actor playing him is trying to do different things, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. Like when the, the one leader guy comes back and says, Mommy, where's my mommy? And I'm sitting there going, Know what's going on here because I'm confused. Then there's the scene where Adric. Do you know who the voice of reason in this episode is? The smartest person in this episode is Adric. I'd like to repeat that because it sounds vaguely important. The smartest person in this episode is Adric. Because Adric comes up with the idea just to play along, like, yes, of course it's the trees. And the fifth doctor doesn't catch on to the fact Adric is just playing along. He seems perplexed. You know, even though it's a thing previous doctors like Troutman or Baker would have done, he's like, Edwards, what? He looks at Adric in confusion, like, wait, what? Have you succumbed to this? Once again, dum 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 I don't know what it is with the fifth doctor in this one. He's so stupid. Um, <clears throat> Adric is the one that's tries to play along with him to lull the crazy guy into a false sense of security so he can steal the key. You know, there's a problem when the smartest person in your group, common sense-wise, is Adric. Because Adric is book smart. Let's, admit, let's be honest about it. He's pretty book smart. But he's young and he's naive. And there's several episodes where him being young and naive and not having a lot of street smarts or a lot of common sense gets him and the group in trouble. Not here. Suddenly, he's the smartest one in the group, common sense-wise. And there's a problem. When he's, when, when Adric is the brightest one in your group, there's a big problem. Huge red flag. The red flag is so big at this point, you're taunting bulls with it. And then there's the scene when Adric tries to pass the key off to the doctor. And the doctor gets the key and the nuts guy is like, show me your hands. And the fifth doctor like holds it behind his back like he wants the nurse to take it. And apparently the fifth doctor's stupidity is contagious because suddenly she also turns into a moron. Because does she take the key? No. It's like, he's like, here's the thing. And she's like, oh look, the thing. And Davis is like, yes, I'm holding you, you know, the thing like I want you to take it. Am I supposed to take the thing? Like he's supposed to turn around and be like, I need you to take the thing. And she's like, do you want me to take the thing? Yes, I want you to take the thing. So I'm supposed to take the thing? 
Yes. Is she American? I have to wonder. Uh, just for some reason, she turned stupid right there, huh? And I'm watching this episode that does, the logic of this episode is not holding itself together well. There is one scene I really enjoyed. There's one perfect moment in the episode when they're debating on how to punish Adric and the fifth doctor trying to get Adric out of there. It's like, well, why don't you throw him outside, leave him to the mercy of the trees? And the crazy guy's just like, no, the trees don't have any mercy. And the fifth doctor's just like, ah. I did love that scene. Just the way the crazy guy goes, no, the trees have no mercy. I think it's supposed to, no, the trees have no mercy. I love that. Just this matter of fact way of, oh, the trees have no mercy. Come on, you know. I will admit it, that was pretty cool. It was only a few seconds, but it was a great pretty seconds. A, a great few seconds. And I like how Davis is just like, oh. <laughs> I did enjoy that scene a bit. The stuff with Tegan, which is also very boring. It's a common thread in this episode. Her and the Mara stuff, when there's two of her and then more of her, is really boring. Do you know why it's there? It's there to kill time. And I'm jealous. Because time doesn't have to sit through it. And I still do. That sucks. Because it's awful. Um, yeah, Janet Fielding is fine in this, but the whole bit with the multiple Tegans, for some fucking reason, I uh, and then there's a bunch of Tegans, and then they merge all into one Tegan, and I don't care, and it doesn't make any sense. The guy who's talking to her and manipulating her is still great. I like him. He has this energy to him. He's not in this episode as much, but I like him. He just has this crazy look about him. Again, he reminds me of Wayne Alexander. He has this cool look. I like him. And then there's this scene when she tells him to go away, and he kind of disappears and then she kind of disappears but you can still see like their silhouettes not the right words but you can still kind of see their outlines and silhouettes and stuff but they're all black that was a neat effect and i really liked that effect but i was so glad when they got out of that mara zone because it was like i'm sitting here going <sighs> actually i wasn't doing that but i wish to god i had been i'd have been much happier if i'd slept through it now, I do like Janet Fielding when she's possessed by the Mara. I enjoy her acting there. I don't like the very ob obvious lipstick on her teeth because all I can think of while she's talking, even though I'm enjoying her performance, she has this really wicked smile she does when she's the Mara. That looks cool, and I liked it. But the whole time, I'm like, she got lipstick on her teeth. Eh, there's lipstick on her teeth. I mean, you can't unsee it. Even when the Mara crosses over to the village dude, there's like lipstick on his teeth. And I'm like... It's really weird. I just can't unsee that. And so then the Mara possesses him and that whole scene that takes way too long. Another thing I don't get about this story. The scenes that are outside, you know what would have made them look a lot better? If they'd actually shot them outside. You know, I get why in like the original Star Trek when they're on other planets, they, they did, you know, outside scenes inside to make it look like an alien planet. But Kinda really doesn't look like an alien planet anyway. It looks like it still could have taken place on Earth. So wouldn't it have made more sense instead of building the set there to, you know, put, you know, re -out, reallocated that budget somewhere else and actually shot it <laughs> outside? Would have looked a little better, wouldn't you say? Well, what are we supposed to do about the prisms that are supposed to be hanging up outside? Oh, I don't know. Hang some prisms up outside. This isn't rocket science. It just seems like everyone who's involved in this episode, especially episode two here, is stupid. The writers, the producer, the director, everyone except Adric. There's not a flag big enough or red enough. Whew. Yeah. And then there's whenever it deals with the village people who are actually the village people, but you know, they're like a village people. That's very boring. Like the, I like the old blind lady, the actress playing her. I like her. I don't know why, but I do. But the whole exchange they're having, and then when they see the captain who's walking around in this protective suit that really make I have to try hard not to laugh, especially when he does his arms to grab the box, because that's... Eh. <laughs> that whole scene, I'm sit still sitting here going... <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, it's so boring. It's like, this is filler. This whole episode feels like filler. The problem is not necessarily that Kenda's bad. It's just too long. The problem with Kenda is that it's four episodes too long. Um, oh, there's just so much stupid going on in this. Everybody seems to turn stupid at some point, except Adric. I have issues with that because that's really dumb. He's the only one that seems to have a plan. Um, oh, 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 it's so bad. I still have to watch parts three and four, three and four. Oh, oh fuck me. Mm. Those may have to be Patreon requests. I've got one of my patrons who'd be sadistic enough to, to request it. <laughs> you know which one you are. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll need a break before I get to the other two. Like, I get some people like Kenda. And I'm not in any way trying to insult you if you like Kenda. Let me be clear. If you like Kenda, you like Kenda. All I'm saying is I, for the life of me, can't see why. I can't. I don't get it. I don't get why people like this story. And again, I haven't finished it, even though I've seen it before. I've, I've forgotten a lot of it because I honestly think I've repressed it. <laughs> I just... Woo! I, I, to me, Kenda seems like something you show, like... It's like something that it is done to a POW when the enemy is trying to torture him for information. All right, talk! Never! You'll never get me to betray my country. Oh yeah? Put on the Kinder DVD! <laughs> I'll talk! I'll talk! What? The President's secret bunker? Let me draw you a map. <laughs> now here's the codes, here's the front door, the guard's name is Herman. Tell him I said hey. Ask him about the wife and kids. You know, isn't that like a violation of the Geneva Convention or something to force somebody to watch Kenda? Because that's definitely unlawful uh, torture right there. Ooh. Yeah, that's Kenda in a nutshell. It's, um... Uh, to put it another way, I need a minute to organize my thoughts because this story really takes it out of me. <laughs> uh, it's like... I don't understand why anyone would show someone Kenda. Kenda is like that episode of Doctor Who you show somebody if you're trying to convince them not to be a Doctor Who fan. And you all want to watch that Doctor Who show, it's terrible. No, I think it's pretty good. Oh yeah, come watch this. Oh! You know, that's like if you don't want them to be a Doctor Who fan, show them Kenda. <laughs> or if they're a modern Who fan and you don't want them to watch classic Who, show them Kenda. You know, real friends don't let friends watch Kenda. Like, I, I suspect there's like a hotline for that if you're thinking about watching Kenda. It's like you find out one of your friends is about to watch Kenda. Hello? I have an emergency. Yes, yes. Hot, this is the emergency hotline. What can I do for you? I have someone who's about to watch Kenda. Kenda? Holy crap! And then he gets a hold of his supervisor. We have a Kenda situation. Kenda? Holy crap! And he gets a hold of his supervisor. We have a Kenda situation. Kenda? Holy crap! And you just hear this echo of, like, say here's the building, you just hear this echo of, Kenda, holy crap, holy crap, just going up the whole line until it hits, like, the top guy who has, like, this emergency button he hits, you know? It's right between the kill the moon and the forest of the night button. Beep! You know, they send someone out to tranquilize you, probably with horse tranquilizers, to stop you from watching Kenda. You know, you're just sitting there, the intro's playing, Kenda part one, you feel a dart hit you in the back of the neck, and you're out. We saved another one. I mean, the only way they can make Kenda worse is if they smeared Vaseline on the camera lens and started playing the ballad of Johnny Ringo in the background and suddenly decided that the planet they were on was an egg. And after it hatched, it would lay an identical egg. Ugh, Kenda, it's so dark. So, what are your thoughts on Kenda? If you like Kinda, for some reason that I can't possibly fathom, please comment down below and explain to me why. Because I certainly don't get it. Or if you found this video a bit amusing, because uh, I will admit I was trying to pick a humorous uh, comment down below as well. Other things to do, click the like button and the subscribe button and the bell for notifications so you never miss out on another 
video. I also have a Patreon that helps me pay the bills, and I certainly appreciate all of the support I have there. I want to give a shout out to Colin Coney and Stephen Crane, two of my top tier patrons. I appreciate their support as I do the support of all of my patrons. I also have a P.O. box. If there's anything you would like to send me, please not the DVD release of Kenda. Um, <laughs> as well as a link to my Amazon wish list. Excuse me. My Amazon UK wish list as well. Uh, normally, of course, I try to uh, <laughs> be constructive about why I don't like episodes or why I think they're bad. But this Every now and then I run into one that's just so blatantly awful that I can't take it seriously. And here's the thing. An, an episode of Doctor Who can be objectively bad and still be a fun watch. Horns of Nymon is like that. Horns of Nymon is objectively bad. The budget's obviously not there. It's almost a pantomime. But it's silly fun. I enjoy when I watch Horns of Nymon because it's campy, it's silly, and it's fun. Can't... Oh, Kenda is none of these things. Kenda is awfully written, awfully directed. The sets look not that great. The Doctor is the worst I've ever seen him, possibly. Like, seriously, I'm having a hard time even thinking of a Whitaker error episode where the Doctor is this incompetent. Uh, and that's saying things. Um, it's just... Ugh. And most of all, the biggest crime is boring. It's so boring. And I still have two more episodes to get through. Most importantly, thank you for watching.